Moraine Domadred is widely regarded as one of the best characters in The Wheel of Time, and many will make the claim one of the best characters in all of fantasy. I find her to be one of the reasons that the setup for the world of The Wheel of Time works so well. There is a lot of exposition given in the first few books, and Moraine Domadred is often the vessel to do so. And using this character to deliver the exposition works very well because, one, the setting of having the wise wizard tell the farm boys works, but also she as a character just fits kind of this narrative voice. You trust her, and there's a level of, like, almost intimacy with her and the reader and of what she says that really goes above and beyond the wise wizard trope. But let's dive into why all of this works so well for her. She is a member of the Blue Aja, an Aja dedicated to righteousness and justice. An Aja that fits her like a glove. And now many wonder why she isn't a green, the Aja that's dedicated to getting ready for the last battle forever, especially with her main character objective being finding and helping the dragon reborn. But I think the blue Aja is a very good fit because she's not single-minded. While her objective is to find the dragon reborn, she's someone who balances and weighs the world around her very, very accurately. And if she was in this Aja that was so single-minded, I think it would clash with the wider view that Moraine and Damadred allows us to have. On your first read-through of The Wheel of Time, Moraine might come across a little bland at times. I've heard people even make the claim that she's just a subdued character. I would agree with that statement, but disagree with the mentality behind it. I think she is rather subdued, but there's one of the best characters of The Wheel of Time hidden inside, and the more you kind of delve into who Moraine Damadred is and understand where she's coming from, you really understand why this kind of facade of this more subdued woman is up front. There's two ways you can be introduced to Moraine in The Wheel of Time. Time, either in the way that the books are released and start with the Eye of the World, or jump into a New Spring novel, and that can be your introduction. I highly recommend going with the Eye of the World first. It really makes the introduction to her better. Having this mysterious figure who you don't really know be your introduction to the world that you're about to explore works. I think after the incident in the docks, after that book, then you should jump into a New Spring novel. One, it makes the events of the docks have much more weight, and at that point you know Moraine well enough that the New Spring novel really works. But let's examine her development in chronological order. When the New Spring novel starts off, Moraine is still just one of the accepted of the White Tower. She quickly is raised to Aes Sedai and goes on her mission to find the Dragon Reborn. She has some very harsh realities given to her during this adventure. One, the Black Aja is real and it is a threat and it is around her. The book ends pretty quickly after that revelation, but I think if it lasted a few more chapters, we would have really seen the ramifications of this revelation on Moraine. And I think it's why in the Eye of the World her character is so jarringly different than it is at the end of a New Spring novel. She has gone from someone who has a lot of faith in the tower to more of an outsider, someone working on her own. Yes, she wants to find the dragon reborn, but that does not mean she wants to bring him to the White Tower. She wants to mentor him herself. It's debatable whether or not this is an ego problem with Moraine, or just kind of someone who's realistically looking at the world around them, seeing a lot of corruption and danger, and realizing that, yes, maybe just being alone with this one Aes Sedai and her warder could be the best option for the dragon reborn in training. When she enters the two rivers and realizes that Randall Thor is the man she's been hunting for so long, she actually gives Rand space and kind of observes him from a distance. This, to me, speaks a lot about Moraine as a character. It's not about immediate control. It's about observing the situation getting to know Rand, and then judging the best actions to proceed with. And to me, this kind of is a perfect example of who Moraine is at her core. She's someone that, yes, knows what needs to be done, but she's always open to new options and taking in new information. That's one of the best character traits anyone can have in the real world or in fantasy. And this, to me, makes Moraine the pinnacle of what the Blue Aja should be. She's someone who, yes, is always going to fight for justice, but if you're going to be always fighting for justice, you need to keep new, you need to keep an open mind. Just because one side starts a righteous path does not mean it'll end that way. She's willing to challenge Rand and butt heads with him. But when he's right, she backs down and lets him travel down a path that she may not have control over. 99% of Aes Sedai, including some of the ones we know best, like Egwene, Nynaeve, Swan Sanche, are not this wise. They need the, they feel the need to control the situation. Moraine does not feel the need to control the situation. She feels the need to control the outcome, which the distinction there is so important. I think this one quality, this one trait that Moraine has makes her the absolute 
top of the evolution of the Gandalf character. This idea of a wise wizard who's willing to manipulate events but not ever be omnipotent, just a character who's there, who may know more than the rest, but still needs to take in new information and is willing to shift and change. Characters like Gandalf are great, but they're never really wrong, and sometimes that can make them a little more boring. Moraine can be wrong, and she's willing to admit it, and that actually makes her way more interesting to get behind and follow. Now, I couldn't really talk about Moraine without talking about her three most important relationships in a little more detail. The first and foremost being Landman Dragoran. I think it's a great reflection that she has this fallen king as her warder, someone who's so great and so mighty, walks by her side so gracefully, and that's because Lan recognizes the greatness within Moraine and the wisdom of her actions. He's very willing to follow. This man who should be leading the fight against the Shadow actually realizes that the best place for him would be right beside Moraine doing the job that she's doing. He's willing to recognize her actions as the correct path for pretty much everyone to be on. I think it speaks monstrous volumes towards Moraine, and why when Lan thought Moraine died, it was so impactful to him and he got a lot darker. Yes, he'd been stoic up to that point, but I think it really affected how Lan thought the outcome of the last battle was going to go. Next up, we have Randall Thor's relationship with Moraine. With Moraine's relationship with Rand, we have some very interesting dynamics here. Now, Rand never really shows Moraine the level of respect she deserves until after she dies and he realizes how much of a support she was. And that makes her return for him oh so grand, because yes, Rand has become the person that Moraine wanted him to be, and I think he knows deep down that he would never have been able to get there without Moraine's support at the beginning. All their arguments in the past were just Moraine trying to set him down the road that he's currently on in the Zin Rand state. The level of respect he has for her is shown at that last meeting between all those nations, where everyone metaphorically bows down to Moraine's presence. Even the likes of Cad Swain are awed by what Moraine has become. And finally, there's her relationship with Tom Marilyn. I've heard people complain about this romance before and say it came out of nowhere, but I really believe if you reread the series and kind of go into the details of their interactions, it's definitely there. The tension there is not one of kind of resentment and anger coming from Tom. It is one of kind of repressed love. Yes, Tom does have a lot of anger towards Aes Sedai, but he recognizes Moraine for what she is and does not apply that same hate to her, even though he tries to. Moraine kind of sees Tom for, as I've covered before, the amazing person he is, and there's kind of just a building affection that grows. It comes to a climax when Moraine breaks into Tom's rooms and they have one kind of final conversation that can be interpreted as being a very negative one, but the way Moraine breaks down Tom, in my opinion, it's actually her just showing him that, look, I understand you and I see through you, and that makes the romance to me make a lot more sense. It's a little strange, but I think Moraine Domondred is Robert Jordan's voice coming through the series, the clearest and the strongest. It's kind of the outsider perspective, someone who really sees and understands the events going on. So when Moraine gives her opinion, I think it behooves the reader in almost any situation to kind of take it as almost word of God, because she is the wisest character we meet at any point throughout this book. The only person that we have that has her level of clarity in the world might be Elias Matura, who is definitely worth his own character examination in himself. Elias Matura embodies a realistic view of the world to almost a ridiculous extent, but I really like the way it's executed. That's for another video. If you're going to take away one thing from this video, just realize that Moraine Domadred is the voice of balance for the Wheel of Time. There's always extremes going on in this series. Rand bounces back and forth between them like a goddamn pinball machine. Moraine really is that center, though, that point of zen balance where Rand ends up at the end. She's the sail his ship really should have been guided by since the very beginning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really love Moraine, and I think every reread has made me appreciate her more and more. There's been a couple characters that every time I reread, I actually like them less and less. Egwene being one, for example but Moraine has never, ever had a moment to me that felt out of character uh, or, just re or just as a negative kind of impact on the series. Everything she does and influences to me is a positive direction for the Wheel of Time, even her darker moments. For all of that, I'm giving Moraine a rating as a character, because why not? And to me, it's going to be the pinnacle evolution of Gandalf out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week, and I really do love the support my channel's been getting recently. It's been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I, uh, I enjoy so much the dialogue you guys have in the comments and while I don't always reply to a lot of them I certainly read almost all um, I just don't have the time of the day to give the level of response so many of your great comments really deserve uh, that being said like and subscribe if you have not already if you want to join the Daniel community here and hit my patreon if you're feeling extremely generous uh, I can't believe the level of support I've gotten there as well hope you guys are having a great day I hope your week kicks ass and I'll hope I'll, and I will see you tomorrow Peace.